OK, Wales were playing Portugal in the second match today in the Rugby World Cup. Um, the scoreline flatters the Welsh. Uh, they played well in patches in this game, very similar to the Fiji game. Uh, they were off the boil. Portugal played fantastically well, considering that some of their players play in the French 4th Division and some of their other players play at home in Portugal. So they play all over Europe. Most of the, the squad play in France at the various levels of French professional rugby. But the game itself was highly entertaining. Portugal were, wanted the game unstructured and Wales played into their hands by you know, not looking after the ball. The breakdown was keenly contested and some of Wales's kicking was, was not accurate enough. Uh, this Portuguese side wanted it broken, wanted it disrupted uh, and open play. And they look very, very good in open play. Um, however, it's, it's Reece Zamet on nine minutes with the first try. You've got to get him the ball, really. Uh, he's, a, he's an electrifying winger, very talented young player. Uh, he's, already play, he's, already, he's already got a lot of caps for his age. He's 22. He still plays for Gloucester. Very talented player. Um, need to get him the ball more. He was very, very quiet in this game, but when he did have ball in hand, uh, he made things happen. That's on nine minutes, and this is this is uh, the, the game. You know, uh, hadn't really settled. Wales hadn't settled into the game, but that was a bit of a settler half penny convert. And then, yeah, Portugal made a contest of it. Uh, open, broken. Uh, unstructured play, they look very, very dangerous, and that's because of their sevens background. They put a lot of emphasis on their sevens program. That then translates into the senior 15 aside national side. Uh, forwards and backs, the handling skills. I mean, if, if some of these passes come off, that final pass comes off, or there's, there's, there's not a knock on there, we, we could be looking at a much closer scoreline and a potential upset. Portugal were willing to throw the ball around. They had no fear. They weren't intimidated by higher ranks opposition. Um, there was a lot of Portuguese fans in the stadium, and, and for a good period, it is, well, end-to-end. -end. Wales are playing into Portugal's hands. Wales needed to basically keep it, not I wouldn't say conservative, but, but structured. Their kicking game was too loose. Um, they were too loose in their handling, uh, too many turnovers. The only area where Wales dominated in this game was in the scrum. That's the only area Wales had dominance in this game for the 80 minutes. Because in open play, um, it was very, very even. And in unstructured open play, when the ball was being turned over a lot in this heat, uh, and bearing in mind it had rained earlier in the day, so there's a slippery surface as well, it plays into the Portuguese hands. They're willing to throw it around. They're willing to attack with no fear. The Johnny Williams yellow card, that is deliberate professional foul. With he, he, he plays the ball on the ground, and it was uh, potentially a try-scoring opportunity. Portugal had got the numbers. They made a line break. Uh, it's it's one of them you take it for the team. Uh, that just shows Wales were under pressure at periods in the first half. Uh, Marquez gets the only points of the first half in Portugal on 37 minutes. And it's very, very close. Uh, and there, it's only 7-3 at this point. So Wales aren't blowing Portugal away. Wales are not playing a very well-structured game. Um, they are making a lot of errors and they're allowing Portugal to stay in the game. Now, Johnny Williams has a try disallowed for a knock-on. It's a correct decision. That's right on the strike of half time. Because there was an advantage for an infringement, uh, they go back for a five minute penalty, and uh, Lake scores his try uh, on the stroke of half time. Half penny converts that. So it's 14 3 at half time, which I think Wales, that little bit extra fitness, a little bit extra professionalism, all playing at that higher level, you could say that makes some sense. But do they deserve to be 14 3 up? Not with how they played. Um, they were really, there was, there was a lack of energy, lack of focus, lack of structure. And Portugal, Portugal obviously are aware that their scrum is not their strong suit, as in scrummaging. But the line-out, they disrupted the Welsh line-out. Uh, defensive line-out, very, 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 uh, very good defensively. Uh, learning the new kick rules. Um, allow the receiving player to advance by five metres, you're no longer offside. Uh, so if you're in front of the kicker, just stand still. And they, they really work the laws of that particular part of the game. Uh, the 50-22, they used that to great advantage throughout the game. Wales were lucky to be 14-3 up. I think 7-3 would have been a fair score line at half time. There was only about a five minute spell, three to five minute spell at the end of the set of the first half where Wales pinned Portugal in their 22. Other than that, uh, Portugal had a lot, of, a lot of time on the ball, a lot of phases, willing to throw the ball around, really testing the Welsh defence. Uh, after half time, what, 
much of the same really, uh, except Portugal had a little bit less space. But Wales, the intensity level wasn't wasn't quite there. Um, but they slowly grind them down. They, they get some phases together. Uh, Morgan's try on 56 minutes, I think, is the turning point uh, in in the fact that now it's it's you know, 21-3 and Wales are comfortable on the scoreboard. Uh, but then the intensity drops out their game again. Um, Nicola Martin's try, however, for Portugal is a highlight moment because it is a cheeky set move play off line out. Now, in this game, the Welsh line out completely malfunctioned. The only area where Wales had a, a, a degree of dominance was scrum time. And even then, the scrums were a mess because there were free kicks and penalties going to both sides. But Wales had the advantage in that area. But Nicola Martin's try. Um, that is a cheeky, well-worked set play move off line out. Uh, the Welsh have set up for a driving maul, um, and the second row goes up, pops the ball down to the flank of Nicola Martin, and he goes through the gap in the line out, and that is a very well-worked set play move. The Welsh line out was not working very well. The Portuguese line out, they only lost one line out the entire match. So that is a clear area of weakness for Wales going forward as well. That line out did malfunction. That got the biggest cheer of the day was the Portuguese getting a try, which was important. Uh, I think they deserved a bit more than that, but hey, they get the try. They missed the conversion. Marquez did miss a few kicks. The scoreline could have been closer had he slotted them. Um, the Gareth Davis disallowed try. Now, there is an obstruction when Reece Sammet makes the line break. The referee on the field says that's OK. At the end of a few phases, Gareth Davis crosses over. Costello, the replacement fly half, slots the conversion. Then the TMI gets involved and uh, the, the instruction is called and the try is called back. Um, I don't know when World Rugby changed the rule that if you took the conversion before the TMI could have a look, they could go back to it. Because last World Cup, uh, if you took the conversion quickly, um, the try stood. So I don't know when World Rugby changed that rule. Um, did Wales deserve a bonus point try? debate that um but why that wasn't picked up earlier in the review process why did it why did the conversion get taken uh again questions asked about world rugby about why the bunker is up in Roland Garros in Paris and not at in the match in a soundproof room uh, seriously why 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 is so technical delay maybe um so there's that one. That's a disallowed try. Uh, the Vincent Pinto yellow card upgrade to a red for the high foot when he's catching the ball. Um, if I'm honest, if his foot's a little bit lower, uh, Josh Adams takes him out in the air. It's one of them. Um, he's over-rotated and the foot catches Josh Adams in the head. I don't think he's deliberately gone out with intent to lead with the foot at a player's head. His foot is high. Uh, but he's not actually looking at Josh Adams when his foot's up there. So it's not as if he's lined him up when he's caught the ball and decided to raise his foot into the defending player. But it's upgraded to a red by the by the review, uh, TMI review. Um, I've made my views clear on these, is it yellow, is it red, upgrade, downgrade with the TMO off the field in, within an eight-minute period of the first ten minutes. Uh, I personally think that should be done post-game. Um, but the off-field review has, has, has deemed it a red card, so he's going to be suspended. Um, he he over rotated. Yes, he's caught the ball, but he's over rotated, and his leading leg is is head height. But if his foot's lower, Josh Adams would have done been been pinged for taking him in the air, and then he ends in an awkward position. So it's one of them where one or the other is going to get a yellow card out of it. How how the incident plays out, uh, it's one of them. I don't think he intentionally just aimed for the players there with his foot. He's not even looking at him, but. That's dangerous, reckless, high contact as the letter of the law. Uh, I think that if, if you're going to upgrade it to a straight red, why is it not a straight red on the field? Save the time of the TMO reviewing it. Uh, but then shortly after that, Falatau gets the bonus point try right on right on full time and Costello slots the conversion. So the, the end result is 28-8. Um, I think Wales are lucky to have scored 28 points. Uh Portugal unlucky to have only scored eight points. They could have called, called you know scored more, but uh, Marques, the scrum half who was had kicking duties, did miss a couple of kicks. I think the scoreline flatters Wales a little bit. I, I think they've been in a test match. Uh, they haven't played well in the two games that they've won. Uh, they were lucky to beat Fiji um, last weekend. Uh, that final pass sticks and, and Rod Rodra goes over. We're having a different conversation about you know, the changes that have been made today and the performance Wales have put in. But they've not been great performances, but they've come away with two wins. And that bonus point try could prove crucial um, when we 
get to the last stages of the pool stage. They've got to play, uh, obviously, um, against uh, Australia uh, later. They've got Fiji out the way. They've got to play Georgia, and Georgia have upset the Welsh in recent years. Uh, and Portugal gave them a good test as well. The Portuguese-Georgia game is going to be really entertaining to watch because they're, they're two evenly matched sides um, where they are in the world rankings and, and, and playing against each other quite regularly. They'll know each other very, very well. A lot of those players are based in France uh, on both teams. So that will be an interesting game. I think Portugal, uh, you know, they, they really entertain today. Um, What's lacking with the Portuguese game is is a little bit little bit of structure when needed, but they're entertaining. They they throw the ball around with no fear. Uh, they're not intimidated by the opposition they're facing, um, and they were very entertaining to watch. Wales, a scrappy, unconvincing wing, I think uh, you could say about the Welsh. Uh, they have got over a potential uh, banana skin. Uh, this could have been a slip up, but I'm not filled with confidence with this Welsh side going forward. Defensively, they were doing you know, shooting up out the line, doing dog legs. They weren't very organised defensively, allowing gaps at times for the Portuguese. Now, I know they made a lot of changes from the side that played Fiji. They're going, you know, they're using their squad, which every team is going to do in this World Cup. Got, every team's going to re refresh the squad a little bit, give every player a bit of game time. Um, but both performances, players have, have, have not shown up. Um, ball retention's been poor defensively. They, they've been a bit exposed. A lot of penalties uh, as well. So, but Wales off the back of a poor Six Nations and an iffy warm-up spell for the World Cup as well. Two wins is, is, is a positive, but they've got a lot of work to do if they're going to really progress far in this tournament. Portugal, uh, you know, it's great to see them back at the World Cup and they have really improved from where they were in 2007. They've come on leaps and bounds since they last qualified all those years ago. It's great to see them back. But for me, for now, that's uh, uh, everything. Thank you very much for watching. And of course, we've got Ireland Tonga coming up later on this evening. That's going to be a fun game as well. World Cup favourites versus the Pacific Island Beasts of Tonga. That's going to be a physical game. Um, we'll see what lineup Ireland put out, how many changes they've actually made. But they're going to be in for a test match. Tonga could upset them. There's the potential there for an upset if Ireland, like Wales, get off to a, a slow start or lose focus, lose some structure. Tonga will play like Portugal did. They will throw it around. Uh, they will run some hard lines and they will offload a lot. So we'll have that to look forward to. But for me for now, thank you very much for watching. And I'll have some more content for you very, very soon.